So, so far as you can see, what we've done is successfully separated the things. Uh, we have view files that are here. We have controllers that are here. We have core files in here, which is nice. And then now we need models. Now models are what connect to the database, if you can remember that very well. So I need a database control uh, file in here. Okay, and then I need a main model, which every other model will extend. Just like we're extending the controller, <clears throat> the main controller here, we'll extend a main model as well. Okay, but let's connect to the database first. All right, so goody there. So what I'm going to do now is try to connect to the database. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to put my configuration, database config uh, information in the database class. I don't want anyone to touch this once I'm done. I just want to put those in the config. That's why the config is there. Now, usually the config is a problem because when you upload your, your website to the server, Oh, by the way, any files that we are using here, uh, you'll find a link in the description to copy those files in case you want to, uh, you want the code. Okay. So in the config here, I want to put two things here. First of all, I want to know if I'm on the local server or I'm on the, um, on a live server. So what I do normally is I check to see if the server name Now, this is a global variable that comes with PHP and it has server information, okay? So if, for example, I do something like, okay, config comes first, so there are no functions here. If I say print r, and then put server in there, like this. Now I'm going to echo some pre-tags so that we can see this better. Okay, so if I now try to run this, this is what you see. There's an array that comes with the server variable, and there's some pretty good information in here that we can use. So for example, there's server name here, which tells us what server we are on, and this one is local host. So let me get that mm -hmm. and copy, and then come back here, and we can use that in an if statement. We can say if server name, okay, we need server though, because that's where it's coming from. And let's put, that's a string. If the server name is equal to, what is it equal to right now? Right now it's, it's equal to localhost. So if it is equal to that, then we are on our local machine. So in here, we'll put config for your local machine or local server. So here we can write something like uh, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. I don't know what really activates the... What is it supposed to do? No. Hmm. No. Okay. I was hoping it would do that on its own. Okay. So here I will just say database config. Okay. So this is the database configuration. So then we can do else, whatever else the server is, then it's the live server. Database config for live server. Okay. So this way, it means if you upload your website to a new server, you don't need to uh, save diff, you don't need to change your configuration just to know uh, I've had this problem. The reason I've come up with this is because I've had this problem where I'm working on a local server and try to upload to a, a, a live server and then I have to change the configuration because I replaced all the files. Because it's easier to replace all the files than to start replacing one file that you edited and so on. So this just saves you a lot of headaches. So here what we will do is let's start with the local server. Since we're on the local server, let's do that. Now there's a lot you can get from here. Um, even the request URI, the script name from server, there's a lot of information. So just go through all this and see what useful information you can get from this, right? 
But for now, this is all we need. Uh -huh. So database config, and there we go. So here we're going to say we need some constants. So we're going to use the word define, and this is the thing that defines our constants. So here we're going to say something like uh, host, host name. So our host name is localhost. Okay. Yeah. Now we should know uh, this is the DB. So let's just call it DB host. And let's remove name. Let's put DB, shall we? DB user. DB password. And then finally, the DB uh, driver. So we have a driver, we have the username, we have the password, we have the host. And we also need a DB name, don't we? DB name. Finally, name is useful. Okay. Very cool. So we'll copy exactly these things to the other side. So localhost, the database name. What database name should we use? This is, uh, let's call it Udemy underscore DB. Uh, the username is going to be root. This is the default username. Password will be empty. Now, if you're using mump, the password might be root as well. So you try that if uh, the empty one doesn't work. And if you added a password when installing Microsoft, my, my, my SQL. <laughs> so if you installed a username and password, then that's what you're going to use here. You won't use root and an empty password. You use the username and the password. Otherwise your database won't allow you to connect. The driver is MySQL. The reason we added driver is because we're going to use PDO, which is good because it allows you to change between several types of databases without much hassle. Okay, so define, define, define. Everything is defined. We can copy this over to here. Let's leave it on the normal uh, stuff for now. We will replace these when we go on a live server. Okay, very cool. Now we have the connections we need. Down here, you can put some more stuff. So here, for example, let's try with app info. So I want some app information here. So I'm going to define a few items. Now, the reason we're using define and not uh, normal variables is because constants uh, are global variables. It means wherever I am in the application, I can use DB host. If I use variables like like app is equal to, these variables will not work when I go to inside a function, inside a class, I won't be able to find them. I'll have to tell them to, to write global and then load them as global, but that's not good. So let's use this defined constant here. So this one is app name. So it's up to you. You can say app name like this. So it's easier to see. I think let's do that. And let's call it Udemy app or something. I don't know. Udemy. You can put an app description and then describe. Uh, tutorials. I don't know. You can say uh, free and paid tutorials. That's your application description. Then you can add other things here, uh, constants and so on. Okay, for now, this is what we need. We need this configuration. Uh, yes. So I'm going to go to my database here and try to make a connection. So to connect, you know, in a class, you can just put code here. You need to put that code inside a function. So always we have to create a function. And this one is going to be function connect so that we can connect to something. Now this is going to be a private function because we won't need to use it anywhere else apart from inside the class. So that way it's protected. And let's say connect, I want to connect. So how do I connect? I'll say con, I'll call it a connection. I'll call the connection con is go to new PDO. 
I do like using PDO. I don't use MySQLi anymore. So I use PDO because it allows for me to do prepared statements in an easy way uh, to avoid SQL injection. And then I can change the database driver to a different one that is not MySQLi. Okay, so what we do here, we are going to create a string, a connection string. So the string will go something like this. Uh, how will the string go though? Wait a minute. It'll go like MySQL because that's the driver. We put a full colon after the driver and then we will say host name is equal to, and then we will put the host name, which is localhost in our case. And then we put a semicolon. So be careful here. There's a full colon, there's a semicolon there. Who knows why it's like this. We'll say DB name is equal to, and then let's put the database name, which is Udemy underscore DB, like that. And then we'll put our string here. So I've done this so that you can see the difference here. So there will be a connection string, but then we need authentication. So here we need the username the username is root and then the password is an empty string so like this it means we have made our connection mm -hmm. so once we instantiate the database then we can make a connection so if i try to run this nothing will happen right nothing will happen here because it's not even trying to connect to the database now, keep in mind, we did the configuration here, so we're better off using these. But for the sake of testing, before you add those constants here, it's better you test it like this. Make sure everything is good, and then you can try to run. So what I want to do now is create another function, which is public this time, so, so that we can access it from outside the class. So public function, and this one is query. So we just have one function in the database thingy. It's going to be called query, just so we can run a query. Simple and straightforward. For now, all I want to do is just say connection is equal to uh, this connect, like this. So all I'm doing is just trying to run this function. I'm running this function from here. So this connect refers to this function. So that if there's an error here, I will see it. So let me come back here and refresh. Okay, so there's nothing happening because we're not running this database class at all. So let's try and do that. We're going to do that in the controller. So we're going to go to the home control. Since we're on the home page and we're in the index page here, I can easily say DB is equal to new database. So I'm instantiating the database class so I can use it. Yeah, so I can do this instantiating anywhere I want to run a database operation. So if I now refresh, it seems everything is going uh, very well. But let's try and do show and say DB. I want to know if a connection was actually made, if this is an actual uh, database item. But wait a minute, let me do this in the database thingy itself. I want to show the connection to make sure that the connection is a PDO object. Oopsie daisy, nothing is happening here. Why is that? Hmm. Oh, because I'm not running query. Ah, see there, my bad. So what I'm supposed to do is say DB query. Because what's happening is I'm making an instance of the class here, but I wasn't really running any of these functions. So I have to exclusively or explicitly tell it to run one of these functions. Unless it was a uh, the constructor class, uh, the constructor function, it would have run automatically. But let's run this one. This is how you run a function from within a database, from within a class, sorry. Now you can't do this if I had put private here. It would give me an error and say, that's a private function. You can't run it from outside the class. You can only use it from within, like I'm using this one. So if I try to run connect from the outside here to give me an error, but let's see what happens when we try to run this. And there we go, undefined variable string. Really? Online 13, let's go there. 
it doesn't oh yes you see i put str here and then i put string there oopsie i'm getting sloppy okay there we go fatal error uncaught pdo exception unknown database udemy db okay so it means things are running very well here the only complaint is ha it has is that the database is unknown it doesn't know what this database is so we have to create the database and this is how we do that we go to a new tab and just type php my admin actually you have to type localhost that way you run through apache and then you say php my admin one word like that and this is what you get so you get the php my admin section if you had put a password you will have to authenticate yourself and whatever password you put and username there that's exactly what you need to put uh, here when you are connecting yes or maybe you can put specific passwords you can actually do you can put specific passwords to each database in case you are sharing this thing and you don't want others to see what's on your database okay so what i want now is to create a new database so i'll click on new at the top there new and say udemy underscore db and let's create and just like that we've created a database and it's right there now i have many databases here but on your system there'll be maybe a few or just this one uh, yes so just with that we've solved our error because now the database exists so we won't see a problem so you see here we don't see anything now the thing is it didn't show connection let me just make sure in the let me do a var dump here and say var underscore dump on connection here yeah so that it shows me because I knew was showing, but it wasn't clear enough. So this is a no, it means it's equal to nothing. No is emptiness. So it means the connection failed because we don't have an actual connection or did it. Normally I would see an error if it failed. Now the reason why it's telling me this is no is because I haven't returned the result here you see this function runs every time a function runs it has to return a value in order for you to push that value inside something else like here i'm telling this to run a function and the result of this function should go into connection and that's what i'm echoing now if you don't return any result from here it's going to return something whether you like it or not and that return will be no so what you need to do is tell it exactly what you want to return instead. So I want to return the connection like that. Okay. So we can do this now. And now it's an object. It's a PDO object. Very nice. So instead of var dump, I'll use show, which will look much cleaner. And let's see now. There we go. It's a PDO object. Very nice. So things are working out. If you see that, that's cool. You can also just do this and just say return new PDO, something like that. This should work the same way. Yep, yeah, exactly. So directly. Very nice. Now let's replace things and see if nothing changes. So as you can see in the config, we have DB host, DB name. So let's replace those here so that once we change things in the config, they also change here. So host name is here so i'm going to go outside the the string yeah and dot dot and put that there okay db host and db name is here so i'll just do that since it's the last thing and db name and then we have a driver since it's the first thing i'll just put it here dot to concatenate and boom okay okay then we have a user here db user so i'll put that there so keep in mind this is a comma there comma with password there as well db pass there very nice so let's see if uh, nothing has changed and voila nothing has changed very cool so we have a db connection here 
which is nice. And now what we need to do is just to tell it how to run a query. That's what we need to do. So let me remove this show here. No need for that. And oopsie there. So what we need now is to be able to run this query function. We have connected this and let's run that in the next video.